big Buddha. She's just here. It's not too old. I think it's only been around since about 2015. There's someone in the distance. She's going to walk around here 108 times, which is a special number in Buddhism, clockwise. There's a few people praying and some more tourists arriving. But I've got it to myself at the moment, so I'm going to get a few photos. So this temple was built because there was a problem with some Indian people that came here. The previous king got an army together and managed to get them out of the country. I'm actually at a place called Dochula Pass. There's meant to be a, an amazing view here where you can see the Himalayas. Obviously the weather is not so good today, but well, it's that time of year where it is quite misty and quite foggy and it's rare to have clear days. But I will be coming back here on the way back Harrow, so maybe I'll have a chance to have a clearer view on the way back. So this is the view of the Himalayas that I should be able to see on a clearer day. Mount Everest is over in that direction somewhere. But that's the view I should be getting here. There are some mountains here though where it's forbidden now to climb the mountains because there was one year where some people climbed a mountain which hadn't been climbed before and there was no rain so it stopped the whole chances of, of rice being grown here and completely destroyed any chance of there being healthy harvest so since then it was banned to climb the mountain because they believed that there were spirits or a goddess living in the mountains that was disturbed and then brought bad luck to Bhutan and they're quite a superstitious country they believe in lots of different spirits in different areas and they respect the nature because of that I'm now in the town of Punaka and this is known as the Phallus Street because there's all different palaces painted on the different houses So this place is a temple of the divine madman. So in the 15th century, some guy from Nepal came here and started practicing Buddhism. Is that how I say it? And he would bless people with his phallus. That's why the phallus images are all over the place. He also defeated a demon, some female demon that turned into a dog. He killed a dog. The dog is buried there and I wish I could film inside, there's so much to see inside, but inside the temple, loads of people come here for fertility, people that want to conceive. And inside there's like a photo album that people have sent letters and photos to show their success stories of coming here, which is really, really cool. But yeah, I just wish the weather was a bit better today, but the Divine Madman, although it's a bit of an odd name, it seems a positive name. It's a good thing and the phallus image all over this area and other parts of Bhutan, it's more of a way to ward off evil and a symbol of protection. So I'm now entering Punika Dzong, I think that's how it's pronounced, it's basically Fort, it's Punika Fort, which is way more impressive than the one I visited yesterday in Dimpu. But again, I'm not going to be able to film inside the temples themselves. So I can film in this bit before I take my shoes off to go inside. We have another prayer wheel. Now yeah, let's grab it and walk around. So originally this was used as a fort and you can see these ladders, you would be able to have moved them up so when people were invading they couldn't get into the fort. So this is the wheel of life. It's very difficult to explain everything that's going on but there's six different worlds that you can be born into after death so you've got like the, the god realm the demigod realm the animal realm hell the eternal hunger realm and the human world and there's a lot more to it you've got like the the pig the rooster the snake um, the pig represents ignorance the rooster represents um, lust i guess and the snake represents anger. And if you have one of them, you will always have the other two and that's why their tails are linked to the other one's mouth. 
but there's a lot more to explain about it, but it's, it's quite fascinating. <laughs> Punaka Suspension Bridge, which is the longest bridge in the country, which is about 180 metres. So I'm going to make my way across there in a moment. So it wobbles a little bit, but it's not too bad. I think the one I did in Canada wobbled a lot more, but it is a bit slippery because of the rain. But I just love all the prayer flags. So all the different colours here, they, they represent a different element. So I think red is fire. Blue, I think, is water. I think green is air and yellow is earth. And I think white is to do with death. But all around the country, there's prayer flags everywhere. Everywhere you go, it makes it so colorful. Some do fade, but then they're removed and replaced with new ones. And I'm imagining I'll see a lot more of these on my way to the tiger's nest tomorrow. Pretty much everywhere has like photos of the royal family. Um, most houses, from my knowledge, have them. Temples, shops, cafes. So these are the five kings. There's only been five kings of Bhutan. The first was crowned in 1907. Um, I think crowned by the British, from my understanding. Um, it's because it used to be a different democracy to how it is now, although it's only recent that prime minister's been elected. Before that, the king had rule of everything but you've got the first second the third king is the one that died about 40 then you've got the fourth king that passed his reign down to the current king at the end so he's still alive the fourth king and he's the king father or the father king and from my understanding it's a really good royal family that really look after their subjects and believe in democracy which is why they now allow elections and they've got a prime minister so I'm just starting the hike to Tiger's Nest. Hopefully it'll only take a couple of hours to get there. There are some horses there that some people use to get halfway up, but I'd rather walk. So I'm almost halfway, I'm pretty hot. Don't know why I've got my jacket on, but in the distance there, you can just make out a tiger's nest, but it is quite foggy and quite misty. So I don't know if I'm gonna get the best photos in the photo spot, but it looks like it's clearing a little bit. So fingers crossed. Got to the cafe, which is the halfway point. And look at this, it has cleared a bit. It is, it's really an amazing sight. I can't even explain it. And I think having some of the fog there as well makes it even more special. So hopefully when I get to the closer viewpoint, it'll still be clear. This is one of the best viewpoints. There's quite a few along the way, but this is quite a good viewpoint. So these are used. People come up here when someone's passed away and leave them here as respect for that person. I won't be allowed to film inside, but I can film up the stairs at the moment. So yeah, I think it took me about an hour and a half to get here, which is quite good. There's a lot of steps to go down and then steps back up again. And there's the entrance to Tiger's Nest, but I won't be able to film inside. On my way back now, that was pretty impressive. It should be quicker on the way back, surely, I'm hoping so. So the Tiger's Nest was built in the 17th century, and it's got its name because of the second Buddha, the second Buddha here, um, he arrived on a flying tiger, and he came here and he had to defeat a demon. So he meditated for three months in a cave before he was ready to defeat the demon. And when he defeated the demon, 
he turned that demon into a protector of Dharma. And then in the 17th century, this was built by the unifier. So in many of the temples here, you'll see the main Buddha, you will see the second Buddha often to the left, and you'll see the unifier to the right. And the Buddha's a classic kind of look of Buddha. The second Buddha often has like a little tash, and the third Buddha, or the unifier should I say, he has a beard, a grey beard. It wasn't the most challenging trek, but there were times it got a bit difficult at times where catching my breath because of the high altitude and the amount of stairs. <laughs> Overall, it wasn't too tough, totally achievable, actually really enjoyable. And despite the weather not being fantastic, I think the photos I've taken will come out quite well because I think the fog around Tiger's Nest makes it look a bit more mysterious and enchanting. So I'm now in downtown Paro. Gonna do a little bit of souvenir shopping before just having a chilled out day, really. I don't think there's too much to see down here. But my first stop is Golden Arrow Archery Shop to buy myself a bow and arrow. One thing about all the buildings in Bhutan is that they all have to have approval before being built and they will often have like a similar style. So a lot of the windows are similar. You've got the kind of ornate bits at the top near to the roof. So that's why they all look very, well, I say similar. They're still very different in certain ways, but they have got similarities. But I think it's kind of beautiful the way they all are. Um, the other thing is about the Bhutan dress. So and my guide here is dressed in like in a traditional dress. And I'd say the majority of people walking around are dressed like that. And that's because it is the law that if you're working, most jobs require you to wear that. Um, not all, but most. And some people just like wearing it as well. So you've got a male and female version. I'm now at Paro Airport. It's the end of my time here in Bhutan and I'm ready to board the plane for my next destination. Just got a bit of time to kill and there isn't a lot to do here. There's like a bookshop, um, a little art gallery, a cafe, and that's kind of it. But yeah, my time in Bhutan's been amazing. Could I have spent longer here? Maybe, but I do think the four days I've been here have been enough to see what I wanted to see. The weather could have been better on the second day, but I'm glad it was kind of misty when I did the Tiger's Nest trek because it just felt more mystical to me. So I think that was a positive. But yeah, the people here are very friendly. It's very unlike anywhere I've been before. I don't think I'll ever come back again because it's not the easiest place to come to and I feel that I've seen what I wanted to see but it has been an amazing experience here and I, I definitely recommend it to anybody to visit here and just see how different it is from the rest of the world.